Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and let's talk labeling your quilts. Should you label your quilts? Absolutely. No different than when an artist has finished a fine piece of work that they will put their signature and date on it. It's really no different for a quilt. After all, we've put a lot of thought, a lot of time, and a lot of care in the quilts that you make. Labeling your quilts are important because it documents them. So in the future, everyone will know who made them, what they were made for, and the year that they were made. And you'll be surprised on how old those quilts are. And you thought, geez, I didn't think it was that long ago I made that quilt. Let me show you a couple of quilts that um, I have here. And some of them are quite old. And I want to show you some of the labels so that you can see how well they've worn. And I'm going to show you some new and creative ways to label your quilts. But let's start with the quilts here. This first quilt was quilted by my daughter when she was 10 years old. And the quilt on the back of her quilt is a pre-made label. And the pre-made labels you buy in uh, large panels. You can see I've already cut some out of this. And you would just cut them out and you would fill out the blanks and put them on the back of your quilts. Now when you do that, sometimes it's very hard to write on the fabric because it wants to skimmer all over the place. So if you were to use a freezer paper, do I have it right? Oh, there we go. If you use a freezer paper and you can iron that onto the label, and what it does is it, it prevents the fabric from moving so you're able to write on it. So here's one here and you can see that this has been ironed on and it stays on quite nice. So you're able to write on it. Now when you write on them, there are a couple of things you can buy to write on your quilts with. You can buy a permanent marker for fabric which is highly recommended. And a lot of people do like to use Sharpies. Be very careful with your Sharpies because they do have a tendency to bleed into the fabric. So always test them first. The other thing is a good old fashioned pen will work too. When you finish writing on these labels, hit them with a good hot iron and what it'll do is it'll set that ink. Then you're able to trim them down and put them on the back of your quilt. The next quilt is a very old I Spy quilt. And the label on the back of it was just made with a piece of white cotton. And I was a little bit creative and I made it into a circle to sort of match the rest. And I just took my white cotton and again I wrote on it with the magic marker that goes onto the fabric heat set it, sewed it on, and as you can see, it has made many years of wear. The other thing you can do is you can print on labels in advance and have them all set up and ready to go. I had a friend give me a whole pile of labels that she did herself by hand, and now I'm able to just fill in the blanks and put those on the quilts. Those are really nice and handy to have. And the next quilt is a Christmas quilt. And each one of these blocks are supposed to represent a Christmas gift. So what I did is on all of the tags, I embroidered something with my machine that actually will have words on it. I have the date and what the occasion was for. So now this is actually right in the quilt, the quilt front. You can also, as you stitch your quilts together, you can, instead of just doing a pattern, within that pattern you can put your name and dates and there will be no label then on the back of the quilt, but it is right in the quilt itself and the quilting. Here's another fairly old one and it again is a Christmas one, however I use it for many other times. And on this, all I did was I took strips of fabric that was left over, sewed them together, and made a little block. And again, I just wrote on the block and attached it on. Now you can do this with the test block that you're going to use, or you can just have a leftover block and put it on the back of your quilts. You can also save your test blocks or your leftover blocks. Put them in your box where your labels go, and they can go on any other quilt also. Now here's a wedding one 
that a customer bought and they do not want labels on the quilts because the quilt is not from me, it is from them. So they didn't want a label on the quilt. So there is another way that you can do that. So there is some mark on it, especially if you want to put a date on it. I will put in the salvage, before I sew the binding on, a little piece of fabric and it will have the date on it or any other type of names. This one, for example, is going to go on a quilt that's coming up. So you will stabilize the back of your fabric, get it to your machine, or you can hand write it, and just have the machine do an embroidery. Fold your edges over, and then what you're going to do is you're going to trim this, and it will go right into the edge. So all you're going to see is just this little stitching along the outside. This makes a very nice finish if you do want to have a reversible quilt so that you can have both the front and the back, but you won't have that label sticking out there. This is a great way because it's just a little piece inside the binding. Now this quilt is very different because it's made with men's dress pants and leftover shirts. So I had to do something a little creative for the back of my label. So I put the label that came off of the suits onto the back of the label and actually incorporated it into the saying of the quilt. Now there's another way to put a label on your quilt that's going to be very subtle but still very decorative. On the back of my quilts, and a lot of times on the bottom, I'll put these little folded corners, and that way I can put um, a pole in here so when it hangs up it lays nice and flat, or I can use this for it hanging in itself. Um, I actually covered this in a video, and I can put a link in the description so you can see how to make these corners. But basically the corners just consist of a piece of square fabric fold it in half, corners together, and it would go in here, right in the corner before you sew your binding on. Now when you do this, this is a very fun thing to do because you can put the secret message on one side and then information on the other side. So when it's sewn in, they're only going to see the outside, but anyone who knows will be able to get the message to the inside. So this is kind of a nice way to do. And again, it's really easy. Just set up your machine if it will embroider. And you can put a stabilizer on the back. And then this stabilizer is one that just rips off. Then just take off the stabilizer. Press it into your corner and you're ready to go. Now if your machine will not do embroidery, this you can still do with a good magic marker and it'll be all set to go. Now there are other ways that you can make a label and it works out really well. You can buy sheets of iron-on transfer paper that actually go through the printer and then you would iron it onto your fabric, trim it, and cut the back. You can also print on fabric in your printer. There are a couple of ways you can do it. You can buy fabric that's already stuck on a piece of paper and it comes in a package very similar to this and it's just white cotton and you can put it through your printer. However, you can make these sheets yourself and it's very easy. The things you're going to need is a temporary spray adhesive and this is made to spray the layers of your quilt together while you are going to quilt it but it also works really good on paper and this application. So start off with a large piece of wax paper or something that's just a lot larger than the project that you're going to work on. Then you're just going to take a piece of paper and you're going to put the paper on top of this making sure there is a large area around it. You will spray the paper then you're able to put the fabric gently over top of it, pushing out any of the bumps or air bubbles and making it very, very tight. Then peel off the paper from the background paper, the protective paper, and it's all attached. Then very carefully trim the paper down to its original size. 
From there, you now have that paper that you're going to be able to put into the printer. This is a free label that I got online from Connecting Threads, and I'll put a link in the description. They have a lot of free labels that you can print out that match the fabric that they sell, but they're also very nice labels. The first thing I did is I trimmed it down to size. And what I did is I left a half inch all the way around the pattern. And then because two out of the four sides are going to be sewn into the seam allowance, I only needed to fold and press two sides down. Then I hit it with a good hot iron and set the ink and now it's ready to go. From here, I'm able just to peel off the paper and I'm going to stitch right along the original stitch line. So my label is pinned on, but my binding has already been put on. So in order to sew this, sew from the binding side and you will be able to see your stitching line. So you're going to make sure that this is not going to get in your way and you're going to stitch down right on the same line. For the second side, again, you're going to sew on the binding side and you're going to follow the stitching line all the way to this corner as far as you can go and you don't have to get really carried away of getting right there in that corner. You only need a single thread. And the first thing you're going to do is go into your batting in between your layers there and you're going to go up into your label. The next stitch is going to be right opposite to where you have come out and you're going to pierce your back fabric and then you come up. But when you come up, you're going to just catch the label. This is where I've come up. I'm going to put the needle into the back of the quilt, not catching the front. Then I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to have it catch just the edge of the label. And you can see that I've used black thread, but you can barely see it because they're just tiny little stitches that go in. And you're going to continue this all the way around. So the label's been sewn on and the binding has been done. Now I wouldn't recommend using black thread, but at least you'll be able to see it that way. And you'll see there's no stitching on the right side. Using your printer to make your labels is really a nice thing to do because you can put a lot more information on it than you would have if you were just to hand write the label yourself. You could write a whole story if you wanted to. And again, once you have it come through the printer, hit it with a really hot iron and let that ink set. Then you just peel off the paper and sew the label on. Hopefully that gives you a few ideas on how to label your quilts and different ways to label your quilts. If you have something I missed, be sure to let me know because boy, I like to try to find different ways to label my quilts. I think it's kind of fun. It's the very finishing touch of the quilt. Thank you for joining me and as always, feel free to subscribe and come on back and let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.